Good morning, Campbell River Baptist Church. We're so excited that you can join us for this Father's Day morning. Thank you for thinking about your fathers today. When I think about my father, I think about somebody who is so hardworking, so loyal, so helpful, and kind of funny. Dad jokes. It's a real thing. Um, when I think about those things, I think that there are so many other men in my life that also have those same things that make me laugh just as much as he does, that are so helpful, that are loyal to me and would come do anything for me. So today, think about those men in your life. Think about those men who are your father, but other men that just are in your life and a part of what you're doing and honor and support them in everything. Today during the service, we have a few announcements for you. Dwight is going to be talking to us about um, being fearless once again, having another sermon for you. Uh, and then at the end, Dale has just some quick announcements for you as well. So stay tuned through the whole thing. Share with us through our comments uh, and engage with us. We love it when you do. Morning. My name is Erwin. Happy Father's Day to you all. I'm reading this morning from Psalm 62. Truly my soul finds rest in God. My salvation comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and my honor depend on God. For he is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Hi everyone, Leora here. I wanna to talk to you guys about our Backyard Kids Camp that we're putting online this summer. Now, this program is gonna look different than any other program we've ever put on because it's online, it's not face to face. There's a few things that we're still working out um, and how we're gonna be doing that. But the one thing that I do know for sure is that you need to sign up your kids the reason behind you needing to sign up your kids is that every week we will send you a link to where you can watch our content and information about what activities that you guys want to have to do with your kids. So Backyard Kids Camp happening this summer starting June 30th. I need you guys to sign up. Where you can find that sign up is on our website in the kids section. So go look for it there. I can't wait to run this program and see the ways that God's going to move through it. Hey everyone, Emma here. I have three announcements for you. The first announcement is about communion. On July 5th, we are going to be having communion as a church body, so make sure you get ready for that. The second announcement is about our Father's Day gift basket. This Tuesday, we are going to be drawing a special father or man in our congregation, so if you haven't nominated one of the special men in your life, make sure you go onto our social media page and get on it. The third announcement is about a survey we are going to be putting out later this week. The survey will include questions about what you may look for in a future lead pastor, as well as how you are connecting with CRBC in this time. It's really important to us that you take this because we want to hear what you have to say. So keep an eye out for that survey. We can't wait to hear from you. Hi everybody, it's Ryan Davis here, your senior youth intern. I wanna take a moment and I just want to congratulate the grads of 2020. I wanna say that it has been a very hard year for you guys and I'm proud of you. And I wanna take this moment and I wanna pray for you guys. And I'm also going to pray for this morning's service and for Pastor Dwight. And so if you would join me in prayer. Uh, Jesus Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that Lord, you have a message for us, so we want to just lift up Pastor Dwight to you as he brings that to us. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts and our ears to hear from you. And Father, we want to take a moment and we want to praise and thank you for the grads of 2020. We want to thank you, Lord, for what you've done in this last year, sustaining them through all of the craziness. And we also want to pray for them, Lord, as they step into a new season. We pray for courage. We pray for strength for them in the unknown and Lord, we pray for rest for them as they go into this summer. And so Jesus, thank you for them. And we pray that you bless them in this next new step that they step into. So we pray all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Good morning, Campbell River Baptist. Pastor Dwight here again. 
In uh, Judges chapter 6, a significant event took place at the spring of Herod. This is number two in our series called Fearless. These are rich Old Testament stories about people who we recognize as heroes. And we think of them as fearless. However, when we read the whole story, we find some weren't so fearless. They started out, like so many of us, battling fear. We want to watch how God delivers them from their fears to a very strong point of faith. With COVID-19, it can be a time of fear. The unknown, health, jobs, finances, relationships. These stories that we're going to look at speak to our world today. You know, there's been many Robin Hood movies made over the years. And back in 2010, uh, Russell Crowe starred as Robin Hood. And there's an early scene in the movie where he's being challenged to lead by a mentor. He's reluctant for such a daunting task and he really doesn't want to do it. And they start reflecting on Robin's father, who is a leader, but killed when Robin was just a boy. And he had said things like, battles are inevitable, victory is not. Do you have what it takes? And then there's a, a scene where he says, rise and rise again until lambs become lions. And it means never giving up. If you want to open your Bibles to Judges chapter 6, we're going to begin reading at verses 1 and 2, and we're going to read some of the verses through the story of this biblical Robin Hood. I'll be reading out of the New International Version, and here is uh, chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Now this was about 1000 BC, just, it was actually before King David. They had been slaves in Egypt, they were led out by Moses, and finally they got to the Promised Land with Joshua. 200 years before, Israel had defeated the Midianites. But Israel got kind of cocky. They say, hey, we're pretty good in ourselves, and they stopped depending on God. And God actually removed his blessing from the people. Israel stopped increasing in number. The Midianites were a nomadic people. They moved from place to place to place, usually out in the desert and wilderness areas. But they began multiplying like bunny rabbits, and the Midianites came up with a secret weapon, and that was the camel. With the camels, they were able to travel farther, travel faster, get places faster and healthier. And so these nomads, these Midianites, who had started in the desert, began to move out of the desert into the habitable places. And as these nomadic people, they were always on the move, and it became a little bit like the Old West that we know in North America, where you had the farmers and the ranchers. And the ranchers were coming in and taking over the farmland. And that's exactly what the Midianites were doing to Israel. Might makes right. They would take over the grasslands and move on. They would take over the crops and eat everything up and then move on. Israel was now living in poverty. They were scared. And when the Midianites came around, they were hiding out in the hills in their bomb shelters or their caves or any hole in the ground just to be not seen. And the... the Telegraph was going around, Midianites are coming, Midianites are coming. Into all this story, God sends an angel to a guy who was very, very afraid. His name was Gideon. In verse 11, we read, The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abiezrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Here we see that hiding. Gideon was actually in a wine press, which is a hole in the ground lined with stones, and there's a drain in the bottom, so all the grapes would go in, they'd stomp them, the juice would run out at the bottom. He wasn't pressing grapes, he was actually threshing wheat, which in the, the Old Testament times was basically throwing the wheat in the air, letting the wind blow the chaff away, but they did it in a wine press so that no one would know what he was doing. He actually had wheat, he was threshing it. Midianites, they didn't want them to find out. So he's hiding, doing all this. He does not want the enemy to know that it was harvest time. In verse 12, the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Now that's almost hilarious because you have this guy who's afraid of all these bad guys. 
But God saw something in Gideon that Gideon didn't see in himself. And the same is true for you and me. As God looks into our lives, he sees more inside of us than we see in ourselves. The Lord is with you. God is with you. God is for you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? God called Gideon something that he didn't feel at all in himself. He says, you are a mighty warrior. When God stirs in you and you sense that God wants you to do something great, you kind of get that feeling, God wants me to do something. Let me tell you, what will happen is insecurities are going to rise to the top. Oh, I'm not the right person. It's not me. And all through scripture, you will see people who are challenged by God to do something and they go, it's not me. I'm not the right one. And there are often two very distinct insecurities that rise to the top. And they did in Gideon's life. The first is, Gideon was afraid that God wasn't going to be faithful. He was afraid God's word was not going to be true. In verse 13, Gideon replies to this message and says, But sir, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? The why question. It's very revealing. We, we wonder about the character and the faithfulness of God. Honestly, we do the same thing. If your word is true, God, then how come I'm having such a hard time believing it? If you're supposed to answer prayers, how come it seems like whenever I pray, nothing happens? How come good people experience pain? How come the bad people seem to get ahead? If you're really there, God, why is all of this happening? We question the faithfulness of God, and that's one of our insecurities. The second insecurity is that we're afraid that we aren't good enough. Gideon was afraid he wasn't good enough. You know, I think you and I can relate to this as well. We read in verse 15, But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. We're not big. We're not powerful. We're not experienced. I'm the wrong dude. I'm scared. I'm insecure. I'm not good enough. Now, when God is calling, we often want to present our resume as if we're the wrong person. Spiritually, I, I'm kind of inconsistent. I don't know that much about the Bible. My prayer life, God, isn't that great? I'm not the best looking person out there. Or maybe you might say, I'm bald. Look at all of those uh, preachers. They've got uh, head, full head of hair or salesmen. Have you ever noticed salesmen always have lots of hair? Yeah, look God, I'm bald. Or, I don't have great leadership skills. I hate being in front of people. I wasn't at the top of my class. You know, I was in the bottom half that made the top half possible. I wasn't voted most likely to do anything. I'm just not the best candidate, Lord. Our insecurities, we're afraid we aren't good enough. God, if you're really there, why are these things happening? God, I think you've got the wrong person. So here's your question, your first question today. What has fear kept you from doing that God is calling you to do? God may call you to share your faith. Oh, I don't know if I can do it. I might say the wrong thing. What if I mess up? It could be ministry related. God's calling you to take a step up in the church. Stop going to church. It's time to be the church. God could be stirring with you uh, an idea, but you can go, hey, if I what if I mess up? What if he doesn't come through? What if I get out there and I'm incapable? On a spiritual line, uh, God might be asking you to step across that line and give everything to Jesus. Make it a wholehearted life commitment. You start insecure. What are people going to say about me? What will Jesus want me to change? I'd like to do that, but what if I do something that doesn't honor God? The Spirit of God stirs within you there is always those words that uh, God said to Gideon, I will be with you. There is a mighty warrior inside of you. But God, am I good enough? Insecurities. In situations like this, God wants to do the Gideon. When you are called and yet hesitant, when you have an appointment with God's destiny, but you're afraid to take the step, remember God wants to do the Gideon. The Gideon. What is that? A dance? No, God wants to do the Gideon. The Gideon is this. The Gideon is when God uses an unsure, 
insecure and fearful person to do the impossible. God loves to do the Gideon. He does what only he can do. When facing an impossible situation where all logic says that this deal is not going to work out, that is a candidate for God to do the Gideon. There are two Gideon truths that we want to learn from this passage this morning. And the first is this. With God, his strength through your weakness is exactly enough. With God, his strength through your weakness is exactly enough. Verse 14, the Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? God's strength through your weakness is exactly enough. If God is calling you, he will equip you. If God is calling you, he's going to give you the resources to get it done. If his name is on the line, he's going to deliver. Go, Gideon. You're a mighty warrior. Get up and go. Am I not sending you? You know, I, I've come across this a number of times. Uh, you feel that you're not good enough. I've been preaching for over 35 years, and you know, I still get nervous every week. I don't feel good enough. And here is the deal, really. I'm not good enough. I don't have anything to say that's life-changing. And that's why God takes my attempts at words. And when they're coming to you, God goes whoosh. And by the time they get to you, they're not my words. The Holy Spirit takes my attempts and personalizes them for you. People are always misquoting me. They'll come up to me after a service and say, well, you said such and such, and it just changed my life. I think back, and I don't even remember saying such and such. Or I'd, I'll have a minor point, and that turned out to be a major thing in a person's life. Now, that's not my words. That is the Holy Spirit using what I say. My weakness is a great conduit for God's strength. So is yours. Where are you weak right now? It's a perfect place for God to show up and do the Gideon, something that only he can do. In Judges 6.16, the Lord continues on saying, I will be with you. You will strike down all of the Midianites together. Gideon's still freaking out. When you believe that God is with you, the deal is done. There's no reason to worry. There's no reason to stay awake all night. There's no reason to be afraid. When God is with you, it's settled. When God is with you, it's done. You can take it to the bank. You can rest in it. You can have peace. Have you ever had been hesitant about going somewhere and then a friend says, I'll go with you? That's what God's doing. God's saying, I will be with you. God is my provider. God is my deliverer. God is my redeemer. God is my defender. God is my strength. God is my source. He is my righteousness. He is with me and that changes everything. For Gideon, it begins at home by making some significant changes. Gideon cut down the idols in his hometown, and he says, Today, God, I choose to follow you. Okay, says God, it's time to recruit an army. Put up the posters, announce it on the jungle telegraph, blow the battle trumpets. Now, Gideon was still struggling with belief. I just want to make sure you're in on this, God. If it's you, I'm going to need you to give me a sign. And so he does this outlandish, never-before-happened, impossible sign. He's going to put a sheepskin out. And he said, God, if it's covered in dew and the ground is dry, I'll know it's you. Well, that happened. And the next morning he says, well, just, just give me another one. This time, turn it around. Let the sheepskin be dry and the ground wet. And, of course, it was the next morning. I'm sure God is thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do with you, Gideon. Hey, I give you two signs. So Gideon does go out. He recruits an army. 32,000 soldiers turn up. God says, that's a good start. But Gideon's think, thinking, that's not nearly enough. Scripture tells us there were 150,000 Midianites. They were buddies with the Amalekites, which added another 50,000. So you have 200,000 versus 32,000. Way out of line. Now, of course, here is where the story gets strange. God gets strange. And Gideon thinks, we're going to need a way lot more people. And God says, no, 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 you've got too many. The Lord said to Gideon in verse seven, uh, chapter 7, verse 2, You have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands. Too many. How can we have too many? And here's the second Gideon truth. 
One of the most bizarre truths, but it's seen numerous times in Scripture. With God, the way forward is often backwards. With God, the way forward is often backwards. God, all I want is you to take me forward. God, I'm praying that spiritually we are going to have some forward movement. God, I want you to help my marriage because it seems to be going backwards. Please take it forwards. God, financially, I want to make some forward progress, but things are getting worse. God, please help my kid. Give me some forward movement. My kid's going the wrong way. This coronavirus is getting worse. Sometimes with God, the way forward is backward. All I want to see is something forward and we continue to go backwards. Have you ever shot a bow and arrow? What do you do with a bow and arrow? You get it and you pull and you pull backwards, backwards to get enough force for that arrow to go forward. That's what God does often. Often we go backwards before we go forwards. Whoa, the impossible happens. This is never going to work. Verses 2 and 3 says, In order that Israel may not boast against me that her own strength has saved her, announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remain. 10,000, that's all we've got. But God, I thought we were going forward. We are. We haven't gone forward enough yet. Go tell these guys to drink out of that little spring, the spring of Herod. Watch how they drink. Get down and those that get down and drink like a dog, send them home. Those who kneel and lap, they're prepared for battle. They're the warriors. So now what do we have? We have 32,000. We take away 22,000. We take away another 9,700 and we're left with 300. But I thought we were going forward. And God says, we are. Go get your weapons. Gather up the departing soldiers' trumpets, communication tools. They won't need them. Get some water pitchers from the provisions the guys left. Get some torches to put in the jars. And you now have 300 men versus 200,000. Divide them into three companies of 100. Station them around the valley. In the middle of the night, you will smash the jars, hold up the torches, and blow the trumpets, and it will look like 300 regiments surrounding the enemy. With God, the way forward is often backwards. Well, the story goes that God caused confusion. The Midianites turned on each other, destroyed themselves. And we have to say that had to be God. There's no other way. The way forward is first backwards. God sees something in you that no one else does. He is with you, mighty warrior. Your insecurities may arise. You might be going, what if it's not God? What if I'm not good enough? In your life, God wants to do the Gideon. In your weakest moment, that's where his strength will shine. If things are going backwards, remember, it may be God's unusual way of taking you forward. God wants to do the Gideon. And you might be thinking, I'm affected, paralyzed, hurt by the spirit of fear. Maybe you're, you're saying, I'm always worried. I'm always concerned. I'm always trying to manipulate the situation because of fear. I'm always trying to figure it out. It's obvious that I really don't trust God. I'm plagued with insecurity. I don't feel like I'm good enough. God wants to show you that he is with you. You may feel like your life is sliding backwards. Maybe it's because backwards for you is the way forward for God. Maybe he needs to get you to a place where you've got nothing else but him. Someone said, uh, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. Now, your prayer is actually very simple. You might pray something like this. God, help me to overcome this fear. I want to trust in you, not in what I see. Even when I'm going backwards, God, I want to trust in you. God, break the spirit of fear over my life. I want to put my whole faith completely in you. As we think about this idea of God wants to go backwards before going forwards, it reminds me of Jesus. The words of Jesus illustrate this principle that sometimes the way forward is backwards. 
I want to find my life. I want to find my purpose. I want to discover what my life is all about. And God says, sometimes you need to do the opposite. In Matthew 16, 25, he says, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Instead of telling you, I want to help you find your purpose, Jesus says, I want to help you lose it. To surrender your life, to say, it's no longer about me. I'm a sinner. My sin, it separates me from a holy God. That's why Jesus, the sinless son of God, came and lived a perfect life and died as our sacrifice, as our substitute on the cross. On the third day, God raised him from the dead. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Scripture says that anyone who calls on the name of, the, of Jesus will be saved. It doesn't matter what your background is. doesn't matter how bad you've been. doesn't matter how good you've been. It doesn't matter how afraid you are. It doesn't matter how much you know about God. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved and will be forever changed. The Bible says that you will become a brand new person, a new creation. All the old stuff is gone and everything becomes new. You surrender to Jesus and it's no longer about you. And your prayer is a radical lifetime prayer that says, Jesus, take my life, all of it forever, I give it to you. Jesus, save me and be the Lord of my life. Gideon teaches us great things about fear. He was a fearless leader, but he started out being afraid. And many of us have those same insecurities and we can learn from this, that God is saying, I will be with you, trust in me. Amen? Amen. Well, thank you again, Pastor Dwight, for uh, bringing us the word this morning. Uh, I just hope that you were really encouraged uh, by the message this morning, and we're just so glad that you uh, joined us here again this Sunday morning. And uh, again, just want to encourage you to continue to keep uh, commenting uh, on, our, uh, on our live watch party and um, send us in uh, words of encouragement. Let us know how you're doing on Sunday mornings and uh, join with us that way. We'll continue to try and keep building community that way. And please, um, you know, continue to connect with the church office. Uh, if you need anything, if you need prayer or if you need uh, encouragement or if you need to connect, uh, be sure to contact the church office through uh, the phone or email and uh, just connect with us that way and give our staff encouragement that way. And uh, we're just so thankful for uh, your uh, continued participation with us on Sunday mornings. And uh, we just want to keep uh, continuing to work hard on producing uh, our Sunday morning content so we can get it out to you. I also really want to encourage you to um, please, please, please connect with us uh, at the office so we can get you onto our uh, email newsletter list. Um, communication, obviously, at this time for our church is, is difficult at best. And uh, so we really need everybody who's engaged with CRBC to uh, be sure to sign up for our uh, email newsletter so that we can get you and continue to get you uh, the pertinent information as the board and the staff uh, weekly make uh, decisions. And uh, we want to be able to communicate that with you. There are some um, bigger decisions being made right now as to how uh, CRBC functions and uh, how we're going to continue on over the next number of months. So be sure to sign up for the uh, email newsletter. Contact the church office to do that. Check on our website. Right on our website is a, uh, is a portion there where you can log right in and sign up for our email uh, newsletter right on our website. So be sure to get to our website so that you can keep up with uh, upcoming information. There will be um, some continuing newsletters and things like that. Um, with um, a lot of important information coming up. And so I just wanted to encourage you this morning and thank you for joining us. And uh, we're hoping you're going to uh, have a great week this week. And I wanted to leave you with this, uh, just this quick benediction from Hebrews chapter 13. I'm going to start in verse 20. And now may the God of peace who brought up from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, and ratified an eternal covenant with his blood, May he equip you with all you need for doing his will. May he produce in you through the power of Jesus Christ every good thing that is pleasing to him. All glory to him forever and ever. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks.